Hello my friends, today we are talking about a crypto project with some very interesting technology and that project is called Cellframe. And in the process of today's video, I'll teach you about the project itself, about topics like quantum computing, which I think everyone should know about. So if you like learning about crypto and technology, you should get subscribed and hit the bell button to get a heads up when I post more educational content like this on the channel. Now, right up front, for transparency, I wanna tell you that the Cellframe team has sponsored this show to bring you this educational content about their technology. And that being said, like all my content, this show is not about buying tokens, it's not about getting rich, and nor is it a call to action to buy tokens of any kind. This channel is focused on education, so with that out of the way, let's dive in to that education. Now, for anyone who's watched my channel for a while now, you might remember that I made a couple episodes in the past that laid out the fundamentals of quantum computing and the threat that it poses to modern cryptography. Yes, the same modern cryptography that underpins blockchains like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and basically every other cryptocurrency out there. And this brings up existential questions about how blockchain networks will tackle this future threat to ensure their longevity. And it catalyzed a handful of third generation blockchains in the 2017, 2018 period to begin building blockchain networks with the underlying cryptography that is quantum safe. And one of those projects is Cellframe, which has outlined a very interesting technical vision for how blockchain networks will be used in the future, including but not limited to how a quantum safe blockchain network can be built. In addition to the quandary of quantum computing's risk to modern cryptography, Cellframe is built upon the fundamental premise that today's decentralized applications built with smart contract scripting languages like Solidity don't necessarily adequately fill requirements for true global scale adoption of the tech. And every day, you and I are interacting with deeply integrated systems like content delivery networks, web applications, streaming systems, and more. In fact, you're watching this video right now and you're using all of the above and more to do so. The reality is blockchain protocols and their respective smart contract execution environments are limited in scope, often by design, making the use cases that can be achieved on chain rather limited. For example, a DeFi lending protocol that requires business logic to be run without reliance on one to many host machines would be better suited for a smart contract based DAP, whereas a decentralized VPN with a much deeper service level functionality would be much better suited to a cell frame blockchain model, which is an application service model. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. So as an answer to the challenge of providing scalable blockchain application services like a decentralized VPN, Cellframe is working to build a framework that will augment the existing mechanisms for smart contract based applications with industrial scale blockchain application services. Cellframe envisions a services based blockchain ecosystem that is composed of fully functional distributed compute resources, where the decentralized applications executed on the network can access and use the underlying processing, storage, and networking capabilities on the host hardware or machines. And this model kind of flips the traditional smart contract blockchain pattern, which uses isolated virtual machine-based execution environments, and instead focuses on enabling a wider variety of decentralized applications without requiring specialized blockchain development skills. These services could be built like any other distributed service on the web today, but with the cryptographic underpinnings and decentralized benefits that blockchains provide. Now, I wanna make clear right up front that the implication here is not that smart contract enabled layer one blockchains like Ethereum have no value, quite the opposite actually. In Cellframe's own documentation, there are plenty of references to the specific areas where blockchain applications built on cell frame services model would be ideal versus where a smart contract based DAP where we're pretty much used to on the Ethereum space or in other blockchains like it might be ideal instead. So this isn't a zero sum game. In fact, cell frame is designed with the idea that Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain and other blockchains will tap into cell frame as an integration for various services. But what you're probably wondering now is how this type of framework functions. So let's go a little bit deeper. The three major components that I want to address here is the sort of two level or two tier cell frame network itself, two tier sharding, the post quantum cryptography approach, and finally the cell frame SDK. I think it makes the most sense to start with the base layer, the actual network component itself. 
And the cell frame network is a two-tier sharding environment composed of two discrete levels. The first is the cell frame core network, which is effectively the proverbial circulatory system for the entire platform. The core network serves as the main ledger and transaction rail shared between the many disparate sub-shard blockchains called cell chains. These cell chains are what make up the second level of the network as purpose-built application shard networks that are networked together through the core network. Each cell chain is modifiable to accommodate different local consensus mechanisms and other characteristics depending on the use case that is being built to service. This cell chain pattern is directly inspired by the Polkadot parachain model, which CellFrame notes very clearly in its documentation. Each cell chain can vie for one of the 50 total slots in the CellFrame network through an auction process, again, similar to that of Polkadot. Now, if you imagine the entire CellFrame network as a living piece of organic tissue, each cell chain can be thought of as a cell in that larger network of cells, where each cell chain is a sovereign network in and of itself. In order to communicate with one another, things must be passed between the various cells through some common mechanism, which in this case is that aforementioned core network. The core network backbone is what facilitates atomic cross-chain transactions between the various cells, and it's the crux of communication therein. To give you an example of one cell chain, the first proposed cell chain is KelVPN, which is building a decentralized VPN service atop the cell frame network. Now, the last thing I want to mention in this whole base layer discussion is that the entire cell frame core stack is built in pure C, a programming language known for being the crown jewel of raw performance. The fact that cell frames core components were built almost entirely from scratch in C means that it will likely be lightweight for clients, letting one operate on the cell frame network with minimal hardware requirements. And it also means that ready-made hacking tools that target common implementations of oft used tools will not necessarily work out of the box against cell frames from scratch built components. And speaking of security, actually, let's dive into that quantum safe cryptography discussion here. Now, I brought up the concept of quantum computing and its risk to modern cryptography at the outset of the video, because frankly, I believe that it is a grossly underestimated challenge that we will face in the future. Now, I initially heard about cell frame through another project that I did a video about a while ago called Razor Network, but I ended up sticking around to learn more about it because of its prominent focus on quantum safe cryptography. At a high level, the current risk that quantum computing poses to cryptography is that today's asymmetric cryptography composed of mutually derived public and private keys relies on the fundamental fact that modern computers are not great at prime factorization. In English, basically, that's in its simplest form that modern computers struggle to express a large integer, n, as a product of several prime numbers, as in prime numbers that multiply to make n. However, theoretical implementations of algorithms such as Shor's algorithm that rely on quantum computing's immense computational power and unique characteristics pose a real threat to that safety that we count on in factoring large integers. In short, quantum computers capable of trivially factoring large numbers could result in scary scenarios, such as being able to calculate one's private key given their public key. That's a huge issue. That said, there are solutions being developed now, and many standards organizations and researchers around the world are working tirelessly to create cryptography suites that are safe, even in a post-quantum world. CellFrame has a distinct roadmap for its quantum-safe cryptography approach. First, CellFrame has implemented several of the algorithms that are finalists in the ongoing NIST research contest for post-quantum cryptography. Because these algorithms are theoretical in nature, and have not been tested with a quantum computer of adequate power because one does not yet exist though, CellFrame is focused on building for variability in signatures on the network, meaning that it will support a variety of different algorithms to be flexible in its adoption of the future truly battle-tested post-quantum cryptography standards when those finally emerge. So towards the end of 2022, yes, next year, CellFrame hopes to have implemented a functional model for post-quantum key exchange, which next to encryption is the most often used operation in modern cryptography, whereby two parties exchange cryptographic keys as a prerequisite for encryption operations. So you can look at CellFrame's work on this in more detail in their public code repositories and in their white paper. Now, I, I won't belabor this next point as it's more of a developer focused item, but I did promise a mention of the cell frame SDK earlier in the video. So here we are. In a nutshell, 
The cell frame SDK enables developers to leverage the various features and functionality of the cell frame stack using a set of pre-built methods written in C. Of course, higher level languages like Python or JavaScript are also viable for use atop this SDK. Now, if you recall the discussion around the choice of programming language for the core cell frame stack, the same rules apply. It's generally more difficult to work with C. I can attest, I'm not very good with it, but it leaves nothing on the table in terms of speed. The SDK or software development kit for cell frame is no exception to that rule. It should provide highly performant platforms on which developers can build within the cell frame ecosystem all the way down to building out one's own cell in the network. Now, the final thing I want to mention today is this. Cell frame is designed to be a services based network. I mentioned that right at the beginning where each cell in the network serves a purpose and provides value. The reward system in the network is built accordingly, rewarding service providers in the native cell token or other fungibles in the ecosystem equivalent to their contribution or provisioning of services to the network. For example, for the Kel VPN network I talked about before, those who provide compute resources and network bandwidth to the network could be rewarded in cell tokens or the native Kel VPN network native token Kel by way of this proof of service mechanism. So be thinking about that as you sort of contemplate the impact of what cell frame brings to the table. And I would recommend to you that this being sort of the base layer technical dive for you to go dive into the documentation, look more into the project, see what you think about it. This is meant to stimulate your mind and to get you thinking about what this project has to offer and what the technical components are, most of all, to teach you the fundamentals of post-quantum cryptography because I think it's very important. But I really wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I wanna thank everyone who watches my videos routinely. Truly, it means a lot. And I will leave a couple of links to different videos here. If you have some time to stick around, uh, definitely uh, would appreciate that as well. So hope you and your family have a wonderful week ahead and until next time, cheers.